Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Press Center. Ready for the next country? Number two in the second semifinal, it's Israel. And as you know, just raise your hand if you have any questions. Even though we're doing the interview, just raise your hand and I'll make sure to look once in a while and uh, make sure to take as many questions as possible. We only have 20 minutes and we're running late, so maybe it's under than 20 minutes. After we do this, we have a few minutes to take some pictures of a, at our photo wall. Now, without further ado, please welcome May Feingold from Israel, everybody. You can see your, your sign. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, May. Thank you. You have some supporters here, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> um, May, today I'd like to just start with one of the questions from our online viewers, online uh, viewers uh, that uses the hashtag Ask Your Vision. And this is from, um, from Patrick. He's just asking, are you happy with your rehearsals and what do you want to improve? I'm very happy. Oh, hi. I'm very happy with the rehearsal. It went very well. Um, we have minor, minor changes of lighting, and it's, it's, uh, it's going the right way. Yeah? yeah? Last time we talked to each other a few days ago, yeah. uh, we talked about um, yeah, the dancing and the cameras and stuff you wanted to, to improve. Has that gotten better now? Yeah, we have a, we have a rehearsal, a private rehearsal room uh, here in uh, Copenhagen, and we changed a bit of the choreography. We were lying on stage at first, and we changed that. We're just sliding on stage and uh, changed a few things, not major things. I saw, I saw your rehearsal today. You did the thing with the leg yeah. and the thing. Was that a new thing or was that? Yeah, that's a new yeah, thing. That's, a new that, thing isn't that's it? instead of lying down. That's on hard, stage. isn't it? It's not easy, but it's not so hard. It's fine. Want to show us you now? Wanna try? Wanna, you want to try? You want to teach me? Want to teach me? You want? Yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Okay, let me show me first. Watch it on your panties. Okay, I need the mic so everyone can hear you. I'm saying, if I do it, you do okay. it. You just bounce and slide. Yeah, <laughs> that is so, yeah, this looks the same, <laughs> doesn't it? Oh, God, I'm not going to have children. Thanks. There's a reason why you rehearsed. Thanks a lot, May. Thank you. Can I go back? Yes, please go back. <laughs> this was a bad idea, sorry. Um, okay, next question is, um, well, this is from Jerome uh, Hernando. He wants to know, what is the reason behind your song being in both Hebrew and English? Because I guess when I speak to people, some of them say the reason why it's in English so that everyone understands it. And some say the reason why it's my native, native tongue is because that's the language I understand. So why do you choose both? That's uh, exactly the right, uh, the right answer. I think uh, music is international and, and the Eurovision is very personal. I think it's uh, combining uh, both languages. And also, I said before, I think it depends on the song. Some songs sound perfect in their own language. You don't need English. This song was written uh, by Rami Talmid, uh, originally in English. And it sounded very natural on, uh, on the song. And then we, we, for me, it was very important to add uh, the Hebrew, and we sat down together, and I think it's, uh, it's lovely. It's very organic with both languages. But how is it for you to sing somebody else's uh, lyrics? Because you, you write your, your own stuff as yeah. well. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to it because I do theater all the time, so I sing, I sing different artists' uh, uh, songs. And if I connect to the lyrics of the song, when I heard the song for the first time, it was obvious, it, it was like, my story, it was, it was my song from, from the very first uh, moment I heard it. So it feels mine, uh, even though I didn't give birth to it, but I adopted it. <laughs> it's my child. Beautiful child. Anyone <laughs> has questions for May Fengold and Team Israel? Team. Over there, please. Uh, excuse me, we would like to introduce the team also. Sure, you're, because, you're many. Yeah. So, it's very uh, important to me because these people that are sitting with me, they are everything in the process. I stand on stage at the end of it for three minutes and I shine. And these people worked for months 
to make it all happen, if it's the, the choice of the song, if it's the production, if it's the, the fittings, if it's the, the dancing, the directing, the production. So I, I would like, uh, would you like to introduce uh, everybody? Introduce. Hello, everybody. I'm Udi Bezalel, head of delegation. Uh, the lovely lady with the red hair, it's Tali Eshkoli, our producer, and she's producing on Monday our Israeli party that you are all invited, of course. Osmorag, our director. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can feel free. Uh, Shiran Lakziel, she's one of our dancers, the incredible dancer that uh, back in May. Friend. Of course, the one and only May Feingold. Hi. Next to May Feingold, this is Ofer Menachem, our head of press. The incredible producer and art director of ours, Lior Nordman. <laughs> May's husband. Avner Hodorov, uh, which is our uh, music producer that is responsible for the great same heart. Uh, Maureen Termitz, this is, she's the uh, second dancer of us. <laughs> and last but not least, our incredible uh, hair and makeup, uh, Ben Revivo. I love these guys. <laughs> we love you. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Let's get the first question. Thanks. Hello, Schlager Boys from the UK. Um, that bit where you strut forward is the best bit of strutting in the whole contest. It's fabulous. Thank you. Uh, I want to know where you, where, where you learn to you strut. You want me to try it? <laughs> I don't want to try it. I, mean, I want to know uh, where, uh, where you learn to strut like that. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Um, there's two people taught me how to strut, and uh, I didn't even know there's a word for it. And uh, that's uh, Oz over here, and uh, Shiran next to him. We strut uh, in the street all the time, <laughs> and we do it strut, 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 <laughs> strut, strut. And uh, <laughs> do I do it good? I, <laughs> I have no clue. I just uh, I, I push my legs into the stage. It feels amazing. <laughs> Don't you just love it when people recognize the small details yeah. at your performance? Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Alistair, thanks. Hi, May, May Alistair Birch from SBS Radio in Australia. Can you tell us a little bit about your early life in Rishon Lezion? Um, when did you start singing and uh, did Ooh. you take any lessons? Do you have uh, seven hours? <laughs> <laughs> I started singing since I remember myself. Uh, when I was four years old, I was already the head singer in the kindergarten. <laughs> and um, I'll try to make it short uh, to, to uh, give you just points uh, in my life. I always loved musicals since I remember myself. Um, I started taking uh, classical opera lessons when I was uh, 12, when I was very young. I used to sing opera for years, and uh, dancing lessons since I was four, I was, uh, I was taught uh, classical ballet, and then I joined a, a cheerleader group, I was a cheerleader, and I've learned how, uh, modern jazz dancing, and uh, funny enough, um, my life took me to, I, I wanted to be an actress, and my life took me to music, and um, I had rock groups for years and electro groups. I've been everywhere in every nightclub and my big break didn't seem to come. I was very well known in the underground scene, very successful, but um, one day a show called uh, Kochav Nolad uh, uh, gave me a call and asked me if I want to come and audition and uh, the rest is history. I became uh, well known in Israel and I joined the theater, which is I'm the most luckiest person in the world to have the Kamari Theater because it's my long life dream. I'm the happiest person there. And uh, now I do Eurovision. I, I, I guess there's a lot of other, uh, other milestones in my life, but that's the ones I can remember right now. <laughs> Thank you. Up Thank here you. and then you afterwards, yes. Uh, newspaper Trude uh, from Russia, as you probably know, there are millions of people rooting for you in former Soviet Union. Uh, is there some song uh, from Russia or former Soviet Union from that culture that you like? Uh, I know uh, plenty of Russian songs. I won't be able to tell you the names of them. <laughs> Maybe you could sing a few tunes. Um, I'm 
<laughs> I have a problem burst in singing. Yeah, you can ask the guys. Uh, every interview, they ask me to burst in singing. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's like it's a musical. Your life is like a musical. Just start singing. If you feel um, like it, just... No, the, the thing is that I do have a lot of Russian friends because there's a lot of Russian Israelis. Uh, I think most of my friends are from Russia or from the Ukraine, and I've heard so much music and culture. Um, I can't really tell you something specific, but I know it very well. It's got a good beat, though. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Holland, please. Hi, this is uh, Martijn van der Veen from the Netherlands. Hey. I read about your new album, that you are um, about to release one. Is it already released and is it going to be an international release as well? There's, there's a lot of information on the net that I'm not uh, well aware of. I've released a, a music album four years ago and since then I joined the theater and it didn't leave me much time to do music because uh, I do very big musical theater uh, productions. So it's uh, every evening we have a show, sometimes twice a day. But uh, so I don't, I don't really have plans on, on a second album, but I always say if you want to tell uh, God a joke, tell him you have plans. And uh, if I'll feel today or tomorrow I want to record an album, I'll probably uh, give a call to Avno <laughs> and we'll enter the studio for a few months and uh, we'll do it. Um, it tickles me a bit in the, in the whole uh, Eurovision experience to record a new album. Maybe I will. Okay, we will Thank see. You. Thank you. Good morning, Israel. Hey. And good morning, good morning, Mai. JP from Radio International. I have a question regarding uh, how, how important is the participation for you at the Eurovision Song Contest, since you are already a very established artist in Israel. So important. And <laughs> the second question to that, what is your favorite Israeli Eurovision entry ever? I love Dana. <laughs> I, love, yeah. I think uh, I think she's amazing. Also, as a person, I know her personally. She was a she was a judge of mine on uh, Kuchav Nolad, so I got to know her. Um, I love so many. I love many of the oldies as well. I love Hallelujah. Obviously, it's a it's a big hit in Israel still uh, nowadays. Um, I'm just so proud every year when we send something to your vision, even if it didn't do well in the, com in the competition. I loved Moran Mazor, I loved even Isabel, they're good friends of mine. It's just, uh, I, I love Tipex. I love, <laughs> every year when we choose a song for Eurovision, I'm completely in love with it. It, it represents me. Uh, I don't remember thinking, oh, I don't like this song this year. I'm very proud of, of the Israeli music. Yeah. Let's have a question from our um, uh, online viewers. This is from Jan. Uh, just to go back, uh, no, this is sorry, from a user called Highway ART. So, what, May, what was your impression when you first stepped up, up to the stage, the first time? The first rehearsal. Um, I can't even describe the feeling when you feel the stage underneath your feet. Uh, it feels like nothing else. It feels like a solid ground. I just step on it and it feels different. I light up. So it felt amazing. When I saw it later, the, the arena is so high. You have the screens behind you. They're so high, you, you don't see it because you're with your back to it. And it looks, it's the biggest stage in the world. <laughs> And, and it feels like the right place to be in. And do you feel ready now that you've uh, been on for the second time? Do you feel ready to go on? I always on say, I was born ready. You're born ready, cool. <laughs> Thanks. So what are you going to do then, if, you're, if you are ready, and there's a few days until you're, you're the second semi-final, what are you going to do here in Copenhagen in the next days? Um, well, we're working. We came here to work uh, mostly. We do rehearsals. Uh, even when not uh, in the arena, we do have a private rehearsal room, as I said. Uh, and also, we're having a good time. We're walking the streets. We're, I did loads of shopping <laughs> the past two days. I don't know how I'm going to carry it with me <laughs> back home. I buy uh, mostly toys <laughs> for my daughter. Um, we're going to go to Tivoli, right? 
We all want to go to Tivoli. We're trying to. Um, it's it's funny because I said, oh, it's about time I'll do something extreme. I'll go on. The, I'll go. I'll go to Tivoli. And someone said to me, wait a minute. Don't you do Eurovision? <laughs> 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 and I said, mm, yeah, that's extreme. I, I didn't even think you about it. You can do it. both, and this city can do both. Uh, thank you so much. May I'll see you tomorrow at the opening ceremony at the, the City Hall. Thank you, Team Israel, for joining us. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back here in less than 10 minutes with Norway. Thanks. <laughs>